start? What is our motivation for this uh, uh, work? I mean, I'll give just a couple of examples to show. This is from Ingrida's uh, uh, work, and it's uh, from something that she presented a few years ago in CAA. Uh, and uh, it is uh, a listing, uh, after a content analysis she did, uh, from 20 Facebook uh, sites, uh, archaeological Facebook sites in Lithuania, in which she tried to elicit um, uh, the kinds of reactions, emotive reactions, psychological emotive reactions that people uh, have with archaeological material and uh, sort of to identify ones that uh, relate that are based on artifacts, on replicas, on archaeological places. And this could be positive like, uh, uh, you know, sort of statements of admiration, amazement, decisions, or contentment. Others are uh, uh, negative in a sense because they talk about loss of archaeological monuments, neglect, uh, the black archaeology and its problems, and the notions of uh, identity and how identity can be appropriated. So this is uh, something that uh, uh, she feels very strongly is important uh, if we are to have a, a notion of archaeology that relates in openness and in communication with society, a reciprocal archaeology, if I may say, uh, in which uh, archaeologists and communities talk to each other. Same thing with my work on the other side, uh, which is uh, uh, based on uh, some uh, uh, analysis of uh, uh, Facebook sites uh, in Greece. Uh, so what I tried there is to understand what is happening, again, with uh, an analysis of uh, conceptual analysis of the interactions there. And what we see here is uh, uh, tents in front of uh, an ancient uh, temple, the temple of uh, Hephaestion, the center of Athens, uh, from the movement of populations when Im immigrants uh, were forced back to Greece uh, after uh, the Greek-Turkish war in 1922. And you get interactions such as, for instance, somebody saying, well, there's, there's a description there, and that's an interesting thing, while the, this Facebook group is uh, a community group, you have a language that resembles very, very much the language of an institution in a way. So it's like a musealization of the language. This takes an institutional voice like that, as you see here. And then somebody says, well, we became a sacrifice, Thesea, in front of the Thesean, which is a, a play of words, but uh, people know they have a stay on us, in Greece these days. What do these tents remind you? An unrooting then and now. History repeats itself. So this notion of antiquity, this notion of tents in front of a monument, and this being sort of imbued with significance that is contemporary is something that is there. Garth Beal, commenting to Lorna Richardson's paper, Microblogging Online, Online Community, says that in order to better understand the value of social media to heritage, you need to observe existing communities that are directly or indirectly involved with archaeology. It's something that we thought to sort of uh, inspired us. And also something that uh, uh, I found by looking at uh, sites, I'm not the first one to find that, is that uh, Facebook, followed by Twitter and YouTube, statistically is the most widely used platform on cultural heritage institutions surveyed, that both in Greece but also from the literature survey that I did for a paper that uh, is under publication in a volume due um, early next year. So what is the context and scope of our work? First of all, we want to accommodate different resources, uh, different ways of trying to sort of understand what is happening with archaeology and social media, including collaborative archaeology, open archaeology, emancipatory archaeology, DIY archaeology, uh, participatory museum, the notion of participatory museum that is also sort of has an impact on archaeological public communication practices, participatory archival practice, marketing, inclusivity, and collaborative frames from uh, Jenny Kidd's work, the notion of indigenous curation, agency-oriented curation, reciprocal research, some notions that really sort of we want to have in the, in the picture as interpretive uh, lenses. And what we don't have today, we don't have the data in order to be able to do any of the analysis that would allow us to employ these uh, uh, principles. So in order to sort of do our project, we started with a literature survey. And for this, we scoped the project. You might say that there's plenty of work, uh, uh, and very, very important work on social media, having sort of Sarah here, having uh, Isto and other colleagues. I mean, it's obvious that uh, you know, there's been really, really important and seminal work. However, a lot of that work is on different areas, and not really, really on uh, uh, social networking sites. It is on blogging. It is on uh, uh, crowdsourcing. It's uh, on other aspects, on content sharing. Uh, or different uh, areas. So if we look at uh, sort of uh, social media in general, it can include many different things. You know, uh, It can include different kinds of digital communication, having to do with networking, collaboration, sharing, and commenting. And if you see practically what people do, for instance, in the panel that was organized in 2012 in Helsinki, in EAA, uh, well, in the panel uh, on social media, they said we define these technologies including online excavation blogs, email discussion lists, Facebook pages, 
Twitter accounts, Skype communications, interactive websites, online magazines, online events, contributory photographic archives, and handheld device software for on-site interpretation. So you get a very broad range, and we didn't want to go into that uh, wide. As you have noticed, the title of our presentation is something about Facebook. Now, Facebook is too small. I mean, there's no publications. There's only three publications. What's the point of doing a literature survey to sort of survey three publications or something like that? So we took this classification that is a standard classification, very, very popular classification by Kaplan and Henlein uh, of social media by social presence and self-presentation in which uh, they divide things between blogs, social networking sites like Facebook, virtual social worlds like social life, uh, and also in low self-presentation, low self-disclosure, collaborative projects such as Wikipedia, uh, content communities such as YouTube and Flickr, and virtual game worlds. So from this, we sort of isolated and honed down to social networking sites. So social networking sites, one definition, a network communication platform in which participants have uniquely identified profiles that consist of user-supplied content, content provided by other users, and system-provided data can publicly articulate connections that can be viewed and traversed by others, and can consume, produce, or interact with streams of user-generated content provided by their connections. Social networking sites, as some call them, and we call them that, we prefer to call them social networking sites, or social network sites, uh, have been thought uh, by others to be a stage for performing an interpretive identity. Interpretive identity. Another uh, scholar, Jenny Kidd, uh, using a uh, frame uh, analysis uh, from uh, Goffman, uh, uh, suggests that uh, there are three marked frames in which uh, communication on uh, social networking sites works for museums. The one is a marketing frame, which she also sees as the predominant almost. You know, this is a predominant way in which museums interact with audiences. The inclusivity frame related to notions of real and online community, and the collaborative frame, perhaps the most problematic you will recognize that the last is the most problematic for archaeology uh, as well in terms of uh, practice. And these are ideas that are uh, inspired, of course, by Goffman's the dramaturgical, the dramaturgical theory of the surf and the frame analysis. So what we did is we did a literature review. Uh, we started in, with the initial informal survey, and we sort of extended the scope to cover social networking sites. Uh, covering the generic class of uh, uh, SNS and online communities and major distinct uh, uh, social networking uh, services such as uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, but also ones that are professional such as LinkedIn and some academic ones. And we created a broader data set of this analysis on social media more generally. So we used queries, uh, like these are the queries that we use. I'm not going to sort of stay here. If you want to, can sort of come back uh, later if you want to uh, inspect them, in which uh, we created our primary and secondary data sets, and we used three databases, Scopus, uh, Web of Science, and also Google Scholar, uh, limiting ourselves to title-only uh, 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 queries uh, on Google Scholar, because if you search text, it gives you a lot, a real lot of rubbish. Our workflow was that we took everything, we put it in Zotero, we de -dupl de duplicated the data, we sort of normalized it, corrected, did all these kinds of things in order to be able to consolidate our bibliographic results according to uh, 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 their source and then select from those. So what did we do? We found out that uh, we needed to exclude many, many of the, uh, uh, of the citations that we found. Why? Because archaeology and social media, for one thing, recalls a number of approaches in uh, uh, media studies and in cultural studies, including the Yusuf uh, media archaeology, the archaeology of knowledge of uh, Michel Foucault and others, right? Uh, so those are excluded. Broad reviews on a general topic, you know, archaeozoology, and there's like one paragraph that there is some work on social media. Uh, people adopt Facebook. This is ex ex excluded as well. Works where social network media are, mi are merely mentioned. Uh, works focused on computer science aspects, how to build a better software for uh, SNS. Works presented in uh, archaeological journals or conferences that do not address SNS within archaeology, but it's about museums, for instance. Unpublished sources, such as dissertations, and so they're sometimes very, very uh, wildly irrelevant uh, results, such as a group of statues from Aphrodisias, for instance. Imagine why a Google Scholar thought that this is, uh, uh, why um, Scopus thought that this is a relevant uh, source for uh, social uh, networking sites. 
So our results was li are like this. We concluded to cut a long story short after combining and uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, selecting and reselecting to 21 uh, specific references on these. And this confirms the fact that uh, uh, Sebastian Walker talks about when he says that currently there is only a small body of formal publications about the use of social networking sites in archaeology and museums. The museums are some more, actually, which is surprising given that the apparent ubiquity of use among individual academics and, academics and professionals, as well as organizations and institutions. So here's a list of the results. I mean, if we sort of uh, circulate the publication, sort of we're happy to share with this uh, with you. And what did we find? We found things that relate very, very much to questions that there are in the field about uh, uh, social media in general, like this set of questions that was asked uh, in the uh, EAA 2012 uh, session. What are the audiences? What uh, do archaeologists do? What do they want to project? Who uses this? Uh, network sites. Uh, can, does it empower or does it undermine traditional structures? How representative uh, uh, are people who use that, the broader population, etc.? So this is one actually of the sources that uh, we found, uh, which gives a set of questions like that. And this uh, illustrates the different kinds of uh, content that we found among these uh, among this 20, uh, 21 results. Another one is a case study of one particular sort of archaeological site, the uh, Conjunto Archaeologico de Carmona in uh, Seville, Spain, uh, in which uh, uh, the people who sort of uh, uh, are responsible for that uh, 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 particular sort of uh, initiative uh, indicates uh, how they use social media now, especially Facebook, in order to be able to understand their audiences, understand who visits the uh, conjunto, it's an acropolis, uh, and uh, improve that. And they get some information that is the demographic information about uh, you know who is interested and who is using this social media. But also, this is their opportunity to launch an initiative, which is uh, uh, a constructivist learning initiative through hidden treasures posts, as they call them. For instance, like they started with a, a poster like this, why would the dead need a mirror? And then people would have to fill the gaps. So there's a dialogue on Facebook on uh, that. And this is a sort of good case of a case study that uh, uh, we discovered. Others are like uh, uh, Isto Huvila's uh, engagement has its consequences. Is a more systematic approach that is evidence based. It looks beyond one a single uh, case. It tries sort of to tally uh, the situation across different media. Uh, actually, that's the only one I know in archaeology that sort of has this nature. There's a few in museums that try to do the same thing, compare across media, and uh, see first of all what are the affordances of specific different media. What are they good for? Uh, he sort of tackles this question of uh, uh, multiplex communication that sometimes you see when people have multiple identities, as uh, Joseph Van Dyke was talking about in, on Facebook and on LinkedIn, that are very different to one another, but also where media themselves, through their affordances, uh, uh, allow for uh, different things and for multiple identities. And uh, Isto's work looks at Facebook, Twitter, Second Life, and Pinterest, uh, and sort of compares across uh, those. Lorna Richardson, who is a prolific writer in the field, actually probably the most prolific uh, writer and uh, one of the most theoretical uh, writers in the field as well, together with you know Easton and a couple more, very very small group of people uh, uh, that uh, are thus inclined, uh, looks at notions of uh, community. She says, for instance, this is a passage that indicates the kind of uh, ideas that she has a kind of questions that she wants to ask. <coughs> are one topic groups, communities, and can shared identity situated the subject of archaeology be a catalyst for community formation? The idea is, I mean, can we sort of be on a single issue, you know, sort of be the community of uh, uh, ice cream lovers uh, or something? It's, this is really the substance of it, and it really goes very, very much into central questions in identity politics, and notions of identity and identity uh, uh, politics today, you know, whether well, single issues can lead us uh, somewhere. Uh, since the location of this community is in a new space, online, where discussion and interaction take place in varying formats, time zones, so that the different places or the asynchronous nature of communications, do these differences matter any longer the formation of a sense of connection and belonging to a network? What conditions, institutional or otherwise, need to exist to support the development of online networks and communities? It's a very pragmatic and uh, almost action research kind of uh, approach. So more or less, because I don't have time to sort of discuss all the various uh, um, uh, publications that we sort of examined, the 21 results, the initial findings is that the majority of works report on SNS initiat initiatives of, of authors themselves. So it's self-reporting in many ways. People have a problem. Typically, they are archaeologists, so they're working in uh, cultural resource management, archaeological management, the different kinds of uh, 
public uh, archaeology, either the public oriented or the preservation oriented, and this is what sort of uh, puts them there as authors. There are several advocacy pieces or best practice recommendations. People who say this is what you should be looking at if you want to uh, somehow sort of uh, uh, adopt uh, the use of uh, social networking sites. Uh, only a few empirical studies that are based on single multiple case studies, surveys or interviewing, and only a handful of authors engaging with theory. Bringing up notions such as social, social capital, networked communities, web marketing, social inclusion, and also tool agency from the SDS uh, 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 field. So using SNS for either marketing or crowdsourcing and social open publishing through microblogging in particular is a widely shared view among authors that we uh, sampled. And there is consensus on the need for further research. So there's a clear need to understand the ways in which technologies can be used to facilitate better and more rewarding relationships between individual and communities. This seems to drive a lot of uh, the opinion. And in order for this to occur, it may be necessary to consider, uh, Gareth Beale says here, the processes at work in the development and marketing of technology, but also its eventual appropriation by users. That means what users do, actually. What those people who are active, the actors of these uh, social networking sites, do. So a framework for analysis that we try to develop traces some contemporary shifts. And this is from a background paper that uh, Ingrida had uh, prepared uh, a couple of years ago, in which she saw that, for instance, we have institutional and professional trends towards community inclusion, openness, and reciprocity, such as, for instance, the case of the participatory museum uh, and ideas about the participation museum. You have a shift from institutional to social and participatory archives and ways of, sort of recording the past like uh, Isto uh, has been sort of experimenting and writing about it uh, 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 about a decade ago. Uh, social networking sites can be seen as communities of practice connecting archaeologists with amateurs, and this is an idea also that uh, uh, Ingrida's work is very, very much based on that, but others as well uh, in the field have uh, been sort of warming up to the notion of communities of practice. And finally, SNS and archaeological heritage can be factors for generating and regulating social capital. They don't always create social capital. Sometimes they consume it. It's, it's an interesting relationship. But so this idea, and uh, this is an idea by Ingridas, uh, Ingridas who's uh, her supervisor, uh, knows. Uh, this is an, an idea that uh, really is sort of interesting to, to consider in a way. Uh, I've been sort of working on a different uh, uh, dimension, looking at issues of civic engagement and human creativity, the notion of participation. How can partici participation is participation, really? And if we say sort of we open up and to sort of invite the public or have our the volunteers come and sort of write and interact with us, how much of this is really participation? And for this, I mean, one needs to take heed of the warnings, mostly, of these two people, the notion of civic engagement and how uh, Nico Carpentier has been criticizing how this is happening at all, really, under this sort of uh, 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 wonderful world of uh, participation, but also how much human creativity and this sort of empowerment and creativity does happen. It happens sometimes, but not always. The other question that uh, I also wanted to look at is, uh, and I'm sort of looking at it my own sort of from my own perspective, is the notion of institutional voices uh, on social networking sites. Uh, how, for instance, uh, archaeological and heritage institutions adopt the institutional logic of the platform. Right. This is an idea that. Uh, uh, it's not my uh, idea, actually. It is an idea uh, which uh, Gauntlet has uh, advanced about YouTube, for instance. You know, you are on YouTube, then you sort of talk like you talk on YouTube, but on YouTube and video, you don't talk like you talk in a sort of very, very professional, uh, uh, you know, sort of perfect, immaculate uh, advertising uh, video. And the thing is that they do adopt. Sometimes they adopt voices like that. You talk to people in a more sort of informal way. But what's interesting is that also people talk in a different way when they talk. When I say people, I mean sort of individuals, amateurs on these sites. And they adopt sometimes the voice of institutional authority and knowledge. There's a, like a phenomenon of hybrid performativity, as uh, Sean Krug had called it. So there's different theoretical perspectives regarding how institutions and institutional voices, authorities, you know, sort of uh, uh, act in the field, notions of governmentality, the notion of infrastructural inversion of Jeff Bauker, the notion that infrastructures make us do what we do. And then we need to take heed and look at you know, how things are work in these infrastructures. Below the, below the lines, try to find the rules or the changing rules of Facebook. Try so to okay. understand how these changing rules may change practice, as uh, some authors uh, uh, have uh, uh, identified. Uh, the notion of functional genre, I mean, these utterances and these communications that happen on social networking sites, it's like the archaeological reports that we we're saying. It's a genre, it's something, and it really plays a functional role. What is this functional role? 
can we learn about the functions, the underlying functions that really are being manifested between people in these uh, communities uh, by looking at the, the form of uh, these uh, documents and finally institutional isomorphism. So there's several things that, and I'm sort of concluding at two or three minutes. Eh? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so several different things that uh, uh, one can find by looking, listening in on uh, social network site conversations uh, that uh, we thought is irrelevant. And, you know, because at the end of the day, as, as you will see, we want to try to develop a method rather than uh, do the substantial, uh, substantive work at this stage. We don't try to say this is what these social networking sites do or they are doing that. What we, what we want to say is, Okay, what is happening in the field? What do people research? And what do we need as tools for documentation and for representation in order to be able to allow different uh, conversations and different uh, uh, explorations, theoretical explanations? But among things that one can see is object agency. Many threads, as we find in on Facebook in particular, start from a photograph, from a drawing or other record. And this you know, sort of mobilizes some conversation. And then the conversation goes elsewhere. It might be on notions of identity, ethnicity, whatever. And the photograph is forgotten, or the archaeological object is forgotten, but that's how it starts. Performativity, people like to post, comment, share, like, and these are efficacious, uh, almost fatty uh, acts in a way. Uh, some people you know, present themselves through that, and the group becomes a middle stage in a sense, because it's not even the open world, but it's not private either. It's somewhere in the middle. Multiple identities of people as they interact in this. It can be different things at the same time. Diverse foci with archaeological heritage, community memory, events, current issues, and controversies sometimes that become part of this, uh, and fun and trivia, different modes of engagement, including activism and various aspects of pragmatic efficacy, social capital, identity making, affiliation, differentiation, community building, symbolic appropriation of uh, archaeological uh, materials and goods, memorialization, and ethical and political outcomes that are part of this discussion. So what uh, I've been saying, so I apologize for my, my sort of PowerPoint. I should have put the PDF, which is there, but I couldn't imagine that it won't, won't work properly. But anyway, uh, what I've, sort of, I've been sort of working for some years now, when I was looking at um, the notion of uh, um, archaeological um, knowledge curation, and in, with a couple of uh, large uh, case studies and some smaller ones, I was looking at Chotal, uh, Chotal Hoyuk and uh, you know, what happens there with the use of digital technologies. One of the things that I was working on also is the development of some abstract model, which is like an activity theory, cultural historical activity theory derived model. In a sense. It doesn't look very much like anything, but it is in the right way some of the same intuitions. And the notion is, if we need to be able to sort of create some formal mechanism that would allow us then to create a grid, a descriptive grid, and demonstrate somehow sort of represent things. What do we need to represent? And as you will see, this diagram is really like, it is like a graph, you know, it is like a network, right? Because the idea is that to be able to say, this is one activity in the center, and this is the actor who made that activity. Is it a post on the side? Maybe someone posted something. Or it may be something that uh, somebody commented or something else. So we need to identify who the actors are for each activity, but also what is the audience of this person is actually the document. It might be a text of a post, it might be a photograph, it might be something else. And this has also references. It refers to a historical event, it refers to a concept, it refers to some cultural object of another kind. So this is the kind of idea for this model, and for this, the key idea. And the key idea for our sort of topic is that we need to take into account both objects and people. So we want to see interactions between the objects themselves that are manifested in these sites, the photograph of this site, the photograph of this artifact, right, or the notion of a historical event as it is represented, and humans, be, be it archaeologists and non-archaeologists, using notions such as the affiliative objects, notion of Lucy Suchman. So what we did is, and I don't have the time to talk in detail about that because my time is running off, I think. Uh, what? Hmm? I have a little time? Yes. OK. Uh, so because, because one. Ah, that's people. right. Yes, OK. So you will bear with me. I'm, I'm sorry. That's a, st a terrible thing you said now, really. Does. I'm sure that nobody, uh, not all people are going to. Thank you for this. But anyway, I'll take then a couple of minutes to say that in this model, and like in activity models in general, we have some basic notions. There's a notion of the actor. There's a notion of the activity itself. And there's a notion of mediating tool that can take many different uh, uh, dimensions. For instance, in a social network inside context, a mediating tool can be a system itself, which is a system. But another mediating tool can be 
the various norms or ideas or preconceived ideas that people have. And another mediating tool is the actual post that people write, right? And all these are, we sort of try to sort of sort them out in a way, and it can be a little complex if you try to do it in a big scale or try to do it formally, but at the end of the day, what we wanted to do is to come up with something that would allow them to create a simple descriptive grid. So that we can use this grid in order to say, okay, we've got this particular sort of community on Facebook, we've got this Twitter uh, interaction. What can we do in order to be able to document it and to put it then open for intellectual inquiry, for discussion, for understanding? This was the idea. And for this, we needed to look then at the, each of them in separate. For instance, actors. We needed a taxonomy of actors. We don't have one, but here's Coley in one of the few studies that are really sort of surveying the field in Australia. What they did is survey social media use in Australian archaeology. One of the things that they do is they provide a list of uh, uh, taxonomy, of, of, uh, of a classification of typology of different kinds of users, including archaeologists, both academic and uh, professional archaeologists, government departments, architects, scientists, other professionals, schools, university colleges, uh, uh, students who, who are in, in school or university, uh, development, mining, and other resource excavation, extraction companies, aboriginal communities, etc., etc. So you need a list of of subjects. You also need to have a sense of what these mediating tools, that these social networking sites as mediating tools are like. And for this, we draw from a uh, publication from the field of management that identified the notion of building blocks. So they say all these sites, all these sites have the following things. They have something that is called presence. So they facilitate people to know whether they are online and expose and facilitate what others are online. There's something called sharing. They can exchange then distribute and receive content to others. They can have conversations and they can communicate with, uh, with each other. They have groups. They can be grouped together in recognizable uh, groups. Uh, there is reputation that is negotiated. Uh, people know the standing of others and they negotiate their own standing versus standing of others. There's relationships. They can relate to each other. And finally, there is identity. And people re uh, reveal themselves. And these blogs are useful as a heuristic in order to allow us and to say, OK, then what is happening with social networking sites uh, within archaeology? Which of these functions are more predominant? And in what way do they manifest themselves? So it gives us this. This is why we uh, adopted this. We also sort of looking at stuff like relations, ties, multiplexity, uh, and composition, f following standard, uh, uh, you know, sort of classic uh, uh, social network analysis uh, uh, theory. This is the work from uh, Barry Wellman and his uh, uh, team that uh, provides this uh, uh, classification here. Uh, and also, we're looking at the genres of uh, uh, actual, you know, texts and other sort of communication objects that appear on social networking sites. And we draw this from uh, uh, Groneman and uh, colleagues, which we identify in the field of museums a taxonomy, a classification of different kinds of uh, content. Stories, providing information on entertainment, news, announcements, records, share your point of view, quizzes, pseudo questions, and help needed. That's the things that, um, uh, that uh, they identify. We're not exactly sure whether we want to sort of how we're going to proceed with that. Most likely, we're going to bring this with our colleagues uh, in um, uh, our work and discuss it in the group and then refine it because we're not certain that some of these classifications are not elegant enough, but uh, are you know, consistent enough to put it like this. Uh, but still, I mean, this is where we are at the moment with this. So what is the purpose and approach? And I'm finishing. It is to facilitate the collection and representation of empirical evidences on SNS uh, archaeological practice which is open to analysis and interpretation using diverse social research concepts and methods, such as the ones I mentioned before. And to do so, the idea is, first of all, to develop and use a simple activity model, not like the model I showed you, but something much simpler that will allow us to have a syntactic layer so we can sort of put things in slots. Secondly, to refine an approach so that we can document SNS interactions and sites using conceptual graphs, probably, and populate data sets through either automated or human documentation according to scope, and I want to do, and sort of discuss it with our colleagues in our work working group uh, three. So in our descriptive grid, we want to include things like, who are the actors of an SNS activity? How do these diverse actors interact with objects? And how is such? Uh, how is such interaction? Sorry, the word missing. How do they do? Uh, what do they do, these people? What are their actions? Do they post all the time? Do they just lurk? Do they just comment? Do they just like? What do they do? What is the input and the output of these other actions? How are these interactions motivated for specific actors and what are their consequences? What procedures, norms, 
system functionalities are the mediated by what kinds of facilities they use and what kind of community network effects does this uh, uh, produce so this is uh, uh, what we did so far so thank you and for more information I'm very happy myself and uh, Ingrida to answer your questions uh, I, now for me and uh, uh, either of us uh, via uh, email or uh, uh, Twitter thank you <laughs>